the company that we've been working on for our project is ASIAS. And we collected our data and information from secondary resources as well as an email interview we conducted with an HR personnel from Adidas. So, Overview of our presentation. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, I'll be doing the introduction of Adidas, followed by uh, Adidas HR policies done by Colin and Carlos. And then we also do analysis of IHRM policies and problem identification by Sydney. And lastly, recommendations and feasibility by Aljun and Yen Wen. So, for introduction of Adidas. Okay, Adidas is one of the largest companies in sporting goods industry, as we all know. And it offers a wide range of athletic and sports lifestyle products through three main brands, Adidas, Hugo, and TaylorMade. And the company is headquartered in Germany and operates in Europe, the Americas, and Asia. It has employed about 46,000 people as of December 31, 2012. And the company's key products include footwear, sports apparel and accessories, golf and hockey equipment and apparel. So from this chart, we can see that currently in the world, Adidas is ranked second by value share in the apparel industry. And we can tell from the table that their closest competitor is Nike, which is ranked first above Adidas. And this is how Adidas has performed financially in the recent years. Let's look at the orange line on the chart, which represents Adidas, and the dark blue line, which represents Nike. As shown, Adidas has started to outperform Nike from point B to point C, which is the period between the middle of 2009 and 2011. And overall, Adidas is also outperforming the world average, which is represented by the light blue line. So this shows that they are doing pretty well financially. So for their SWOT analysis. Do you know the reason why Adidas uh, should go up? Yeah, it's, it's because of the strengths. Okay. Yeah. So, for strengths, the company has, has an exceptionally strong group of brands that is heavily supported by sophisticated marketing. And this allows the company to quickly develop new category and geographic markets, which is why they've been growing so rapidly in the recent years. And secondly, Adidas products are well designed with a strong reputation for aesthetics and function. This underpins brand loyalty by the consumers in response to new products, despite their higher prices. However, for their weaknesses, they, although the company is developing its control space strategy to control retail, most sales are still made by a third party retailers. So this shows that they have an over dependence on retailers and this risks their brand equity. And also, the company lags behind Nike in scale and in many cases in terms of innovation. So for example, Adidas has a far smaller e-commerce operation compared to Nike. For opportunities, Firstly, the development of its own stores, as well as franchises and in-store outlets would drive sales for Adidas, as well as support prices and their brand equity. And secondly, Adidas can strengthen the bond between brand and consumer with social media and smartphone apps, which they have been doing for the recent years. And for spreads, uh, the first one, it, it actually is relevant for all sports brands, which is um, including Adidas, they suffer from large amounts of counterfeiting, especially in the emerging markets targeted by Adidas. And secondly, Adidas also risks endorsement failures because any negative behavior by the athletes and teams that endorse Adidas brands could substantially harm the brand equity. You mean that most of Adidas uh, shares come from emerging markets? 
I, I mean that from uh, your uh, statement, right? Yes. You come to face in the issue. Yes. This uh, most happen in the, in the emerging market. Yeah, but the emerging markets are the ones that they are looking at spending currently. So it will affect their their um their business in these countries. Yeah. So. Looking forward, these are the strategic objectives and challenges that Aligas is making. And later on in our presentation, we will re-look back at these strategies and assess if Aligas' current RHRM policy support these strategies. So firstly, Adidas is seeking to increase revenue generated in retail space that is directly or indirectly controlled. This is partly in response to counterfeiting, as I previously mentioned. As Adidas branded outlets offer a greater guarantee of provenance, more importantly, it underpins quality and price control, which are both crucial to brand position. At the height of the economic crisis in 2008 and 9, many retailers cut prices heavily to move stock, which seriously compromised Adidas' brand strategy. Secondly, Adidas' operation of a variety of brands gives it a competitive edge allowing it to appeal to a broader consumer-based audience than many of its competitors. And further acquisitions could significantly boost sales, especially in areas where the company has identified growth, such as outdoor or adventure sports. So the Demi has surveyed a food more louder wearing Adidas than a shoe. Anyone? No <laughs> sports? Well, no. No one? <laughs> or you? Okay. I have some at home. Oh, you have home? Okay. So it's a, it's a customer. So. Okay. And lastly, Adidas consumers expect a constant stream of innovation and design updates. This will be a constant challenge for the company going forward, especially as it expands into new markets where taste and functional demands may differ. So moving on to employee selection and deployment. So, to discuss more on employee selection and deployment, uh, first of all, in Adidas Group, all policies related to international human resource management are actually standardized in all of its branches around the globe. So, so as for employee selection and deployment, Adidas came up with a deployment method wherein job openings at all levels are posted on an internal portal job system for two weeks before opening the, opposite, the position to external candidates. So in Adidas portal system, all employees are encouraged to challenge themselves by working in different countries. Furthermore, having this system, opportunities for employees are abundant and these opportunities are open, open to everyone as long as the employees fits the qualities needed. And as for the selection criteria, employees uh, willing to work overseas follow a step-by-step -step process. First is to contact the hiring manager for the uh, open position. Then if the hiring manager uh, finds the candidate is suitable for the position, a phone interview will be conducted. The criteria are based on their past experiences and how these experiences are relevant to the open position. And finally, if the candidates, uh, the candidates will undergo a personality fit test if they are shortlisted. Then moving on to employees training and development. This, uh, actually, this diagram. You mean that first, the uh, uh, HR manager will get a, a, form, a form to this candidate, right? To ask whether he had willingness or not, right? And then have some interview and some uh, personality test. Yes. So for us, uh, this diagram, it actually shows the success drivers used by Adidas to measure the employee's actual performance. So the three main criteria, criteria are talent and succession management, the performance management, and learning management. And it is actually uh, uh, guided by leadership excellence and performance culture. So I'm going to explain the talent and succession management first. One of uh, Adidas training uh, covers leadership excellence, which was shown before the diagram, where in 2012, almost 80 leadership teams in Adidas headquarters participated in 
yeah, intensive team and self-reflection sessions. Two main activities were uh, conducted last year. One was the 360-degree feedback and internship style or, uh, leadership style awareness, and two was the regular pulse checks and comprehensive employee engagement surveys. So pulse checks were done to know well, what employees feel and think which are valuable in making uh, sure that the leader's vision is uh, supported by their actions. Then, in talent and succession management, there are actually five different programs in wherein uh, each program is given to employees based on their potentials. Like, for example, in executive development program, um, these were this program is given to employees with potential in having the position of executive level. And then the program uh, for the MDP, which is the Management Development Program, it is for employees to show potential for director positions. And while PDP, DMP, and FTP, uh, these programs are actually given to employees at a professional level who show potential to become team leads or senior managers someday. Then, as part of uh, Adidas Learning Management, several online platforms such as blogs and the Ask the Management platform are provided to employees. Uh, these platforms include data and other uh, learning resources and materials just like the Cyber University in NSYSU. And in addition to these platforms, Adidas will adopt a new uh, learning management system which involves e-learning that aims to integrate training activities and implement new learning, tech, uh, new learning tools to employees. Now, moving on. For overseas assignment, training programs are much more specific. The local HR department provides onboarding training which includes company orientation, introduction to colleagues, and key personnel uh, in the company. This process is being implemented to all of Adidas branches around the world. Furthermore, those Adidas group professionals and their own families moving to new living and working environment will receive services such as uh, relevant language training, cultural training, and relocation assistance. Now, uh, to discuss the underlying details on Adidas performance management and compensation and business, um, here is Pauline. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carlos. So um, I'll cover the performance management, which is the last component of the uh, success drivers for performance in Adidas. So performance management actually includes two factors. Uh, firstly, performance evaluation, and secondly, compensation and benefits. Now I'll just briefly uh, touch on the performance evaluation first. So Adidas used this platform called Global Performance Evaluation and Planning Tool. What this system is about, it actually allows HR personnel and managers to define targets for the employees. And employees can view and assess this uh, platform from time to time to see what job tasks are required from them and what competencies and skills needed to complete the task. So uh, employees are also evaluated and given feedback at least once a year by their managers. Specifically for overseas assignment, uh, for employees on overseas assignment, the evaluation will be standardized um, across all the Adidas office given the same job positions. Okay? So there, definitely there will be different performance uh, evaluation criteria when the job position and job scope differs. For instance, for a product marketing position, the KPI will include general performance of the product. And for e-commerce position, you include the performance of the social media platform. Next, uh, now I will cover the compensation and benefits in Adidas. Overall, Adidas adopts performance-driven remuneration system, which include fixed and variable monetary compensations, non-monetary rewards, and intangible benefits. It uses this uh, system called Global Salary Management System to ensure that the salaries paid are competitive, with the competitors and also ensure that it's performance based so that stellar, uh, staff are motivated to perform to the best. I'll drill into a little bit more monetary compensation. Basically, it's standardized uh, throughout the group company. 
It includes bonus program, which is assessed and given based on individual performance and also com corporate performance. For staff who, is in, who are in headquarters and in Germany and do not participate in the bonus program, they will be entitled to the profit sharing program. And um, Adidas uses this long-term incentive programs to le retain leadership talents and to encourage sustainable performance. So what do they use? It's actually um, the pension plan to keep the staff uh, for long. And um, yeah, the pension plan, which is like a 401k retirement plan in US and the group pension plan in Germany. For benefits package, Adidas gives um, and let, let the executive board members to reimburse the expenses, for, example, uh, for instance, for entertainment and pension insurance fee. The, they will also be provided company card. And for employees in different countries, the benefits given will actually uh, be catered to the specific regulations and norms. For instance, in Singapore, there will be a compulsory maternity leave for the employees, for female employees. Okay. So, specifically for overseas assignment, the expatriates will be entitled to either of these three or both. Okay, so uh, I'll elaborate more for local package in Singapore. It will cover medical, dental um, expenses, annual leave, and AD flex. AD flex actually um, entitle the employees to spend a certain amount on anything that they want. It can be sports, education, etc. For Staff on partial expat package on top it will be they will be provided additional housing allowance on top of the local package. And for full expat packages, they will also be given housing and children's um, provision on top of the local package. As for how expats are um, assigned these packages, we are not given the information as it's being confidential by the interviewee. Okay. So next I'll hand over the presentation to Sini who will assess the effectiveness of the current IHR policies and the areas for improvement. Okay, thank you, Colleen. So just now, um, firstly, we'll look at how what Carlos has explained in terms of training and development policies. He actually talks about such talent succession management as well as uh, leadership excellence. And all this actually allows um, the employee to see Adidas as a very good career advancement opportunity for them because the public the employees are actually trained to be very competent leaders. Then secondly, Pauline touched on compensation and uh, benefits policy, whereby they are actually the employees are, are graded strictly on performance of, of uh, what how they do during their work and there was no discriminating factors involved. So both of these factors add together to cultivate this performance culture in Adidas, whereby you actually have a very loyal and strong workforce to help Adidas. And just now as Jen mentioned, she said that um, Adidas has been working towards like her sales are getting better in terms of Nike is also because of such a lawyer and strong workforce that they cultivate behind it. Yeah. So other than that, um, Alisa is also looking towards a creation of a very diverse workforce. As what we can see, they have support for diverse workforce such as like technical support in terms of the internal job portal as well as service support in terms of cultural and language training. So with such a diverse workforce, actually it's helps Adidas because they can stimulate more innovative design and produce better sports equipment designs. However, what our team did um, was that the improvement could be made in terms of creation of a diverse workforce. And this brings us to our areas for improvement in Adidas. So firstly, based on the interview that we have with um, our the HR personnel in Adidas, they said that they, have, they are facing a problem of management of employees' expectation for overseas assignment. Because employees actually base their expectation on like preconceived notions that they heard from their fr friends and colleagues about working overseas, or they actually thought that um, whatever that their job scope and the culture have in their home country is very similar to the overseas um, environment. That's why they brought over their experience at Adidas to their other countries. And when they reached over there, they realized that the expectation and reality doesn't match, and it will cause discontentment in employees, which the HRs have to manage. So one of the example that um, he uh, she gave us was that a colleague from the Germany headquarters was actually very overwhelmed when he was sent over to Adidas Singapore because uh, in Germany the headquarters was very big, but in Adidas Singapore only slightly over hundred people, which is considered very small. 
So, and the Singapore culture and the job scope given is very different from what is done back in the school country. And second, so the consequences for Adidas, um, because diversity in workforce is the driving element behind the innovative product in Adidas. So when you have discontentment in overseas and deployment, that's what will be willing to accept overseas employment, and Adidas will have to better manage it so as to achieve its strategic direction and growth. And the second um, issue that we pointed out is a lack of formal support in host country, because after aspects are um, being sent to their host, the host country, they are only exposed to the local onboarding process, which is the company orientation and introduction to colleagues and key personnel, and this is actually very limited and very basic. Um, other than that, the informal support actually comes mainly from existing expats who are already in the host country. And there is no formal program for expats after they reach the host country. In terms of the consequences for Adidas, because Adidas are looking to expanding new markets with varying tastes and demands, and this may include countries whereby they do not currently have any overseas deployment staff. So let's say if you send an expat overseas, um, they do not have any formal existing expats in the country to help them with of the support and they will, they will feel very lost. Yep. So now here we'll continue with the recommendation and visibility. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to talk uh, about the problem that we identified regarding the managing your expect expectations. So what the home company can do to help to manage the expectation is to implement a realistic job review. So basically it helps to avoid un Met is for home or employer? Uh, no, for the home company to, to the uh, aspect going overseas. Okay. So you can, um, they can avoid, this RJP can help to avoid unmet expectations by providing accurate, favorable and unfavorable job related information. This will help to ease the job work adjustments and encourage um, congruences between the recruit expectations and the subsequent work performance. Uh, most importantly, because this is an overseas job assignment, so it's important for them to also provide the realistic living conditions of the countries that they are going. Um, so they can provide information regarding the local communities, the schools and the social conditions of the countries. So this will help in the day-to-day -day routines of the aspects in their foreign assignment. So uh, after considering the, the Adidas current HR policy, as mentioned by Pauline and Carlos, uh, we have decided to revise and improve, improve their current HR programs. So basically, there's these three main sections, uh, which is the briefing, pre-assignment trip, and cultural training. So within them, there's activities for under each, each main section. So under the first stage, which is the briefing stage, they have this general briefing and this sharing. So under general briefing, there's this um, seven aspects that the HR should have in mind when they are covering the briefing. Um, so for job scope, career planning, and psychological and social consideration, will help in giving RJPs to these employees that, that want to go for overseas assignment. The rest for the rest of the elements is more related to realistic living condition preview. And also, uh, it will be helpful to invite previous aspects that have went to the country to sh give their um, sharing about how their experience in their country, so that it's more relevant to them. This, this there is a practice or you are suggestion? Um, there's current practice, for instance, they have give the um, they have given the, currently they have given the job scope thing, uh, job scope review about what they are going to do. They also have some um, co cost of living as mentioned, by, um, as mentioned, and then the housing um, in the sessions. So we are suggesting on top of this they can add in other elements. Um, so this is a new thing that we are implementing, which is the pre-assignment trip. This is basically a field trip sort of giving them a preview of what uh, happens if they go there. So uh, this company, uh, the company can bring the employees and their spouses to overseas country for, for instance, five days trips, during which uh, the employees will conduct, do a short overseas assignment in our local office so that they can find out their 
customs and everything. So this is under the host country orientation. So they have this short term work assignment. And on top of that, they also have community orientations. So um, you get to show what are the if you are if you really work there, what are the housing that you'll be living in, what are the educational and recreation facility available within the community itself. Um, this is more catered to their spouses. And then for um, after the after they back for this field trip and they are certain that they want to go, they are able to fit in the culture, they will be we will give them a cultural training after that. Um, such as the such as the assimilations and the sensitivity training. So the timing of implementing this training is important as well uh, because if you give them this training uh, way before they go, so they will forget it. So we are suggesting to implement it before and upon arrival. So the reason for before arrival uh, departure is to so that they have realistic expectations. And then the reason for giving them training against upon arrival because uh, this will help to uh, address the real-time issues that they're currently facing. So next is the feasibility of this program that we recommended. Um, we find that there's no, basically there's no problem in implementing the or realistic orientation briefing because it's just a seminar briefing style. So the cost involved is quite minimal. And the media will be like something like in this lecture hall, there's briefing, there's videos. Um, however, there's quite a big problem in implementing the pre-assignment trip because we realize, um, recognize that the cost involved is quite high. They are sending the employees and their spouses over there. So, but then we can sort of justify our adjustment by showing the management the savings that could result for, um, by implementing this program. And then for the cultural training part, uh, the cost involved is moderate. So, um, but then if we are only selecting those final candidates that are really interested in going overseas, the cost will be much of an issue. Uh, so lastly, for the program evaluations of the entire program. So what the HR person can do to justify their spending to the management is that they can conduct a feedback forms to ask whether, to find out whether the candidates find that it's relevant to their, um, to their needs before they depart and upon arrival. They can also uh, monitor the rate of, after they implement this program, the HR can also monitor the failure rate of the aspect assignment. From this, they can calculate the cost saved from implementing this assignment and then compare with the previous result when they didn't implement this program. Next, I'll move on. Uh, I will pass on to Adrian to cover the second problem identified. Uh, so as mentioned, another problem in Adidas is uh, there is a lack of formal assistance in the host country for the international talents. And uh, the following are our proposal. Um, first of all, uh, the formal assistance for international talents, uh, it aims to provide more assistance and a better and culture process for international talents. Just to be clear, this program is more like a complement to the previously, uh, the, the one discussed by Yan Wen. It, uh, it's more like a continuation and it happens more in the host country rather than the home country of the international talents. So it aims to go beyond the usual onboarding process because the usual onboarding process is only uh, for, it's more designed for the general and local Global staff of Adidas. So, as a program overview, before the focus, before the uh, arrival of the international talents, the focus should be an assessment of the background of the international talent to be hosted. Um, on the other hand, during the stay of the international talent, uh, the focus would be continuous com communication with the ex expatriates and specific forms of support. And after, there must be uh, the focus must be uh, conducting briefings uh, and maintaining relationships with the local partners. So before, uh, to deepen the uh, preparations before the arrival of the international talent, the the host country must do background research. Through background research, they can they, they will be able to understand the country where the international talent is coming from and identify the culture specific needs to better able uh, to aid the international talent in enculturation and getting used 
to the host country. They must also retrieve anecdotal information. As mentioned, uh, Adidas already has an extensive uh, global exposure program for its employees. And from these experiences, they can gather previous information from international talents. And they can also look at the problems encountered by the talents before in specific countries in order for them to uh, make pre precautionary measures. And they must also prepare instructional, instructional materials like blogs and other media platforms and learning kits for international talents so the international talents can have good re reading, reading materials and informational, informational materials for them to have a look at what they're going to experience upon uh, arrival in the host country. On the other hand, uh, during the, uh, the stay of the international talent, regular communication and dynamic interactions should be the focus of the host country. So first, uh, they must provide counseling and encouragement. Like uh, They should have specific staff to give relevant advice from professional career related to, uh, uh, to life adjustment advice and also identify the specific problems and conflicts. Through identifying these problems and conflicts, they, can be, uh, they, they will be able to determine how they can help the international talents. Uh, they should also uh, encourage local to expat interaction, uh, like uh, specifically assigning a local staff, preferably on the same managerial level as the international talent. Because uh, uh, assigning a local staff with the same managerial level, they get to see uh, someone of their same uh, of the same level, but uh, coming from a different perspective because of the difference in their culture and uh, the location of their uh, the Adidas branch. They should also invite the expats in company activities because these company activities exposes them to the local culture and the global staff. They should also. Uh, design a way for expat to expat interaction, uh, like a mentorship program, for example, someone of a higher uh, managerial level to mentor uh, an expat of a higher managerial level in the same, in the host country, to mentor some, someone of, of perhaps lower, so that, lower level, so that they can learn from each other's experiences, not only professionally, but also how they are uh, able to adjust and cope to the local culture. Uh, sorry, I, I asked you a question uh, because you showed this uh, map. Uh, by, it's a sequential, sequential um, or no? It's not sequential. Okay, so I just see you know, this uh, arrow direction. Uh, it doesn't come with a specific no, right, line. Like sequential, yeah. Good. So after the focus of the host country should be maintaining relationships. And uh, first, there, there must be a debriefing, a pre-departure counseling, so that uh, the host country should prepare staff to interview the international talents and ask them uh, for an assessment of their experiences, what they have learned, and what the relevance of the experience is to their career. And they can also help in evaluation of the program so that the program may be able to be better improved in the future. They must also, of course, show appreciation uh, like a pre-departure celebration or a testimonial at Thanksgiving dinner to the international talent and also for the host country. This is, uh, of course, following international um, international customs. And uh, constant communication. There must be persistent online communication with the uh, international talent and, the, and people from the host country because it shows how, uh, how much they want to uh, continue to connect with each other despite the distance, and also the host, uh, the host country should ask uh, how the international talent is currently after going back to their home country. So, for the feasibility of the program, um, I need uh, for three main points. Uh, make the program feasible, which includes employee competency, diverse working environment, and uh, references. For employee competency, Adidas, as was as mentioned, has high standards regarding their employees, and these the, these high standards keep them competent and able to carry out the tenets of the mentioned program. Also, Adidas already has a diverse working environment, and they are already encouraged to be exposed globally, so there is substantial support from the company 
and uh, this support can make the program possible. And references, previous employee experiences can be used as a framework or a reference for the program. So in conclusion, uh, in resolving issues in the HR, IHRM policies of Adidas, so the two main problems of Adidas, as we have mentioned, are uh, management of employees' expectations for international exposure. And as an answer to that, we have uh, proposed the, a revision of their program for, so, so that Adidas will provide uh, a realistic job review and a more realistic living conditions review. And to answer the lack of formal program for international talents in the host country, uh, we have proposed a background assessment, constant communication and dynamic interactions, and maintaining relationships that will be prepared by the host country. So this ends our presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, well, thank you. And I want to share with you uh, concerning this uh, company's uh, situation in terms of high uh, especially for Adidas. This company is a well-established company, right? It's not a, a emerging company. So it must have a long uh, turn of the international experience, right? In this company. So if uh, your company just uh, in the initial initial stage of uh, internalization, you know, your performance not not come from very good training, not come from very good uh, performance management, because you don't know how to manage their international performance. You don't know how to uh, develop the global talent. You don't have any experience, right, to do this uh, international uh, uh, development uh, uh, management. So, what's the most important HR issue? When the company just in its initial initial globalization stage, how do you think? Which is most important? Which function? Which IHR function is most important for a company to uh, <laughs> start its uh, globalization? How do you think? Training, selection. <coughs> financial uh, motivation or any other? Um, well, it would depend on the company well, because some companies, they, their motto is they build in their leaders, meaning they do not acquire leaders as leaders of them. They, they, they hone their employees to become the leaders of the company. While other companies, they say that, well, they hire leaders of the league, and then they further develop those leaders to become the most competent leaders that the world can have. And so in those types of businesses, those businesses can should first prioritize the hiring process because they need to acquire the good competent leaders that their country has. Well the other the other company, for example, like what the IKEA company do. Um, well, they hire employees that share the same values with them, and then that's the time that they're going, they own their employees to become the leaders of their company. Okay. So, the most important thing is that you are, you are bad. You are hiding, right? You are hiding practice or you are seduction. But just how. You see that you are in a general nature. Very important. Right? See that. You must see that the people who first are willing to go over, right? And second, but uh, his uh, personality. Personality is very important. Not everybody can go international. Right? The personality. Right? This is uh, personality. Entrepreneurial personality, right? Yeah, he can uh, self achievement, right? Like, nobody can help me if I just uh, walk abroad. I need to achieve a goal by right, myself. Okay, this is very important. And very fast. Very fast.
try to transfer all the practices from the home country to the host country. Right. So, uh, the personality is very important. Yeah, personality. Yeah. Of course, <coughs> health. <laughs> it must be healthy. Yeah. Uh, it must uh, be a strong, right, critical uh, situation. And last, how do you think family? Very good family support, right? Yeah. Whether he's a, a family uh, can cooperate. Okay. So the first thing, how to see that? You see that an international manager who can go pro for you in the initiate. Initial initial stage of organization. It's very important. Okay. And however, after a period of uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, organization uh, practice, it, you you what's the most important thing to direct the international success. No. Why you you group want to uh, suggest this uh, training development? Why? Why did that? Why? Okay. Yeah. I, do you think I did that really has uh, enough? Knowledge, enough experience to provide this kind of training. Do you think so? Yes. Right. So then you, it's feasible. It's a feasible solution. Okay. Very good. If uh, one company had more experience, right, in globalization, then he can, he should. Build up this kind of uh, development process, international uh, development process for their manager to help them to become an international uh, manager. Not only from the home country <coughs> to host country, but also from the <coughs> low subsidiary right, to other subsidiary. Right? From local to global. Now, you got it? help not only the home country manager to become internet major, but also for the local talent to become the global talent. You see that? It's very important. For when a company uh, uh, becoming more uh, international, right, he needs to set up very good uh, international manager uh, development process right, to help to help these companies uh, managers to become the international managers. And also to help the local talent to become the global talent. Okay. Because these companies have more successful experience and know, right? To know how to uh, uh, direct the international success. And also these company had more and more international manager who can help others, right, to become a, a good international manager. Especially these companies' uh, executive team, these top management team, they had more knowledge, they had no more, more uh, knowledge and experience, right, uh, concerning the, the international career. You know that? Yeah, if you uh, if a boss, your your boss don't have any international experience, oh, it must be a, a disaster for you. Uh, to be assigned to go for, you no, know? because you don't know what difficulty you must encounter in the foreign uh, country. You don't know, and you don't know how to help you. 
but he just work, uh, require you. Right? Require you to get successful. But he don't know how to help you. Okay. So you should know that. You should know that. Okay. And after you uh, company uh, has very successful uh, in many localities, in many foreign localities, many foreign subsidiary, you that you should set up a very well established performance system. Because a lot of time you know how to design a very good performance system. Right? To direct you are in a major to perform well. Got it? Got it? So all the IHIM practices need to be uh, well development and well uh, leverage, leverage. Right. Very good apply in different uh, stage of the competition. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, supplement this uh, idea for you to company the uh, and I, I think for IKEA is a very good uh, case of uh, cross culture, especially for servicing company, uh, servicing company, not only the manufacturing, also how to uh, provide a very good service right? in many host countries. Uh, this is a very important. So I did not need to form is a company culture, right? Not the Sweden culture. Remember, that's, I, I don't know what's the Sweden culture before I, I don't have any experience with it. However, for company to get successful in global market, don't just uh, uh, rely on your own country's culture. Not enough. Though you are successful in your home country, right? But don't just uh, rely on that experience. Right? It will not be feasible uh, in the other country. So you need to have some uh, local adapt adaptation, right? You need to have some adjustment. So in this situation, Especially after you had a period of time for your organization, you need to form your own cultural value. You need to know what kind of the cultural value can direct to the global success. Right? And then try to figure out and find all this value and to see that. You are uh, a local talent or a worldwide talent, right? Or to uh, develop them, give very good training for them, right? To uh, uh, behave themselves according to your company culture, right? Because this culture can direct to the very good <coughs> success in global market. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for all your two group. Uh, a very good final presentation. Thank you. Uh, we'll stop here, okay?